we are urging with the global community, especially the financial community, to stop discriminating Africa in terms of pricing of capital. We access capital on our continent at a higher price. Colleagues in America, in Asia, elsewhere, Europe, access capital for the same type of business much, much lower. That risk profiling is actually incorrect. It's a bit discriminatory. So we will be making a case as we have done before in two days time, starting from tomorrow in Paris, urging for the reform of the global financial system to make it fair. And I'm one of the presidents on the African continent in that small committee working for the broader benefit of the continent. So I'm saying we prefer, we love the capital to come into our country at a fair price. So that again we reduce the cost of the ultimate product. Whatever you do to make it supportable. It makes commercial sense, doesn't it? So but having said that, third issue, we also want to see joint ventures. Before there was a perception that the joint venture is the government untwisting the private sector, taking decisions that belongs to the private sector. Flip the coin. I consider we consider in Zambia joint venture as one of the best insurance policies against expropriation. You hear me? Because you create a vested interest. The investor from outside and the local people working together, taking risks together. How you structure your in a share of is your business. But we would like to encourage changes. Because before a government of Zambia can talk of expropriation, they will have to face their own citizens who are involved in those businesses. There is a call. I think I've more or less touched it really that uh, we missed out, Africa missed out on a number of phases in human development, economic development. And I think it's because we do not invest in innovation. And innovation will allow us to leapfrog, to leapfrog processes, activities that would ordinarily take a month, two, three, four, one year, but do things quicker. Innovation, technology. I think that is the main issue. Secondly, I've touched on it in my speech there, that it will allow us to do things, deliver products, services quicker. I want to argue that cheaper. It's a debatable it's subject, but cheaper as well. Lowering the cost of doing business is very important. The country needs it, the neighbors need it. Food is important. Agriculture, very important. Food shortage, I've been saying to Zambians that the food shortage was coming, and they thought I was talking. Now Zambia is one of the few countries in the region which have the food surplus. And we're seeing the pressure. Illegal trade, smuggling. We don't want to chase people in borders because those are supposed to be customers. But the reason it's happening in that now is because we're not producing enough food. We're not processing enough. So there's huge opportunities there for production in Zambia, processing in Zambia, trading in Zambia, trading into the region and out of the region, out of the continent, to contribute to the food basket, which is not food, global food basket. I can go on with services, services, many areas. So when you see, the thing to do is to see what our agenda is. It's a growth agenda, the economic reconstruction agenda. So there lies a lot of opportunities. Um, even those that uh, are involved in infrastructure, we are looking at private-public partnerships. Uh, 
in infrastructure. Concessions. Big concession. We just gave out a concession on one of our roads to Saka and Dollar Road with a ticket tab of $600 million. Where many other concessions of that nature. And where you'll be able to get your retail assured. So, but it's not just you. Eh? The size is beyond you. Consulting. Bring others on, on board. Find your partners in Zara. Thank you for having that. Um, for us to develop our economies. Economy here in Zambia. We need to start from the premise that we don't have adequate capital. Resources are scarce. Yes, we're saving mobilization capacity. Yes, 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 yes. Pension funds, anything you want to call, it, the name you want to give. It. Still, it is true that we don't have sufficient capital. Yet, we have ambitions to grow at a faster rate, but also in a broad manner. There's many, many sectors. Not a monolith, monolithic way, but several sectors. All of which compete for resources, for time. And I dare say, for technical know -how. I can go on with the list. I'm sure you know what I'm saying. So, from that premise, so we can grow our economies quicker, we can deliver opportunities for our people, we need to mobilize capital beyond the boundaries of our own countries. Zambia takes the position that capital Special risk capital, of course, debt. More so when it's debt into a private business. Because debt into a government sometimes is inefficient, leads to other problems. That is welcome. I've given the basis, the reasoning. We inherited an economy which was taken down from growing from 6 plus percent, 7 percent to minus 2.8 percent. We didn't have so we welcome investments. Second issue, we desire to have investments, equity providers, risk capital providers, debt capital coming into the country especially the debt, at a fair price. God gave us a resource endowment, substantial, mm -hmm. which we take for granted. In any sector, I think it's now acknowledged in the EV revolution, electric paper revolution, which will be the largest single business sector. Africa, in terms of resource endowment, collective is ahead of Everywhere. Copper, cobalt, nickel, manganese, lithium based minerals, rare earth. Call it critical materials. We have. So, why should we continue exploit this in a raw form? Send them away in some form of a transaction which is of lesser value and only to receive the finished products on the continent. We pay a, happy, a heavier, higher, heavier price. I think it's you, the, you the young guys. We really give credit to you, the entrepreneurs there. It is you who will help us accelerate raw production, processing, into higher value items in the value chain, such as in the EV industry. It is you. We are looking up to you and we want to assure you that we will do what we should do.
when we make what we should do to support in our budgetary allocations, I think we, the African government, will give more support to ingenious people, to innovators, especially the young. So that would be my message to that group there. Continue doing what you do. I like what I see, I'm sure others do. And for us in public office, Rwanda, Zambia, let's support this generation.